In this video, I'll be covering the implementation of a Terraria-like world generation using one-dimensional Perlin noise. If you're unfamiliar with Perlin noise, it's what generates these noise patterns. You've probably seen this type of image somewhere before. For our purposes, just imagine it as a function that you pass in coordinates and it gives you a height value. This image I'm showing right here is two-dimensional noise, and in our case, we'll be doing one-dimensional noise. So what you can imagine here is that we're just taking all of the points along only one axis. In our case, just imagine it as the x-axis. So we're just taking one line straight through this image, and then the white parts will be the high points in the train, and the black point parts will be the low points in the train. You can also layer this effect to get even more complex features. The library I'll be using actually has stuff built in for doing this but we'll be using a very simple system this time. I'll be building this into my platformer that I made in my tutorial series. I'm going specifically off of the code from episode seven. If you haven't seen that yet, I'd recommend you watch it. But what you need to know for the purposes of this video is that I do have a system where it generates just flat terrain as needed. I also have a built-in system for rendering that optimizes things so I can have infinite worlds. Anyways, the library I'll be using here is not actually built into Python. You do need to install it, which is why I've got a terminal open right now. To install it, you'll need to do pip3 install noise. And then you'll have to wait for it to install. If that command doesn't work for you, you might be using an old version of Python where pip isn't included with Python, or you may have just had the pip executable not linked properly, in which case you'll have to go hunting for it and then run it manually. You can look up how to use pip on your own, it's not too hard to figure out. Anyways, now I've got this noise library installed. I'm going to show you what the game was as of the end of the tutorial that the code I'm working with is based on. So I've just got a platformer here where I can run around, basically, and jump. That's pretty much it. There's also a little bit of a parallax background, but this train's infinite, and it's generated as needed. Once it appears on the screen, it'll call a command and try to generate some terrain. So all I'm doing here is replacing that code to add just height levels so that I can have Terraria like terrain using noise. So let's take a look at the code. The first thing I'm going to need to do here since I'm using the noise library is import the noise library. So there is a lot in here. But for the purposes of this video, we only need one section, which is this generate chunk function, which is called whenever a new section of terrain needs to be generated. And conveniently, I have these target X and target Y variables, which indicate the X and Y positions of the terrain I'm generating. So to use the noise library, and I'll be using one dimensional noise here, I put in an X value and it'll give me a value from zero to one for that location. And it's smooth. So let's say height equals noise dot P noise one, which is the function in that library that does one dimensional noise. There's also P noise two, which is two dimensional P noise three, which is three dimensional. You can actually just do it just in the shell help on the noise library and it'll give you a lot of information. Anyways, so let's pass in our X coordinate. And something interesting here is that it's on its own scale. So you can spread out the noise or make it denser by modifying the X value you put in. So if I multiply it by 10, it'll be crossing that noise pattern very quickly and you'll get very sporadic patterns. Whereas if I do times 0.1, it'll be slower in crossing that pattern. And this is what I'm going to go with because this is terrain. You don't want it to go crazy. The, there's a lot of keyword arguments here. Most of them are related to the layering if you want to use multiple layers of noise to create some special effects. But for this instance, I'm just going to set the repeat to a bunch of nines. The repeat is just how often the pattern repeats in, in infinite world generation. You don't want it repeating, so I just threw in a bunch of nines. Anyways, in this generation code, I've got a few sections that determine if there's dirt, grass, or a plant. The grass is just the top of the terrain, and it's determined by Y value. So what I'm going to do here is replace this Y value of 10, which determines where the ground is, with the height value. So I'm going to do 8 minus height. Let's do by 5. I'm also going to want to convert this to an integer because 
I don't want things that are half a tile tall and whatnot in terms of the terrain. That can cause some issues in this section where I'm saying it has to be an exact a certain value to place grass. So if this is eight minus height by five, uh, don't forget that the reason why I'm doing the times five is because the noise returns a value from, actually I think it's a negative one to one. So by multiplying it by five, I can make the amplitude of that noise larger, which makes the train have taller mountains and stuff like that. All right, so this last section here is just taking this nine and going eight minus height by five minus one. That'll make it so that the grass appears on top of, well, the plant appears on top of the grass. This is all relative to the ground level to determine this stuff. It goes dirt, grass, plant. I actually made a mistake here. Since this is negative one to one, I have to multiply by five in here, not over here. I don't know why I was doing it over here. I want to apply the height amplification and then convert to an integer. It was just being forced into zero because the range for the output is, I think, zero to one, actually. Anyways, with that fixed, we can take a look at our terrain now. So as you can see, I spawn right on a hill and I can walk around and you'll see more terrain. This is coincidentally pretty flat. That just happened to be the noise pattern. Seems to like to hover around zero for whatever reason. But there's hills and grass. You can see the grass is being properly placed. Anyways, that's pretty much it for implementing one-dimensional noise. I'll probably do more videos on two-dimensional noise and the things you can do with it. Two-dimensional noise is a lot more useful for actually uh, top-down world generation, and sometimes you can generate caves using two-dimensional noise too. Well, caves in uh, side views games. But top-down stuff typically uses two-dimensional noise, and it layers it for like different biomes and then heights. So you'll have water at low enough heights and stuff like that. But yeah, the implementation is pretty simple and I don't really expect people to be working off of what I did like in my code in this video. I'd expect that you'd implement it into your own projects however you see fit. Just keep in mind you pass in an X file and it gives you the, in this case, the height of the terrain. And you ha you'll have to multiply the value you put in and the value you get out to modify some of the parameters a bit for like how spread out things are and how tall the mountains are. If you don't know how to do the world generation, I do suggest you check out my episode 7 video. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter where I post frequent updates or fairly frequent updates on whatever I'm working on. I also have a devlog series on this channel where I'm showcasing a project I'm working on right now. And I also have a Discord server with a channel dedicated to questions so that I can answer questions people may have. Although if you do have any issues with this specific video, I do suggest you download the code from the description that fixes most of the issues people have. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.